of value of the real true meaning uh, of the word. I mean, we use the term born again. Um, we all have a, a certain understanding of what we think that really means. But we're going to explore what the scripture says so we can understand how rich that it really truly is to be born again. Hallelujah. Now, you hear me say a lot of time that we are people that like to look at pictures rather than read. And I'm, is that true? Okay, yeah, sure. There's a lot of things that, believe it or not, that we do in this society that is ingrained in us, that is actually a right behavior, as opposed to the way that we have been schooled and trained to think. How many times you ever picked up a magazine and you started at the back and turned from left to right? You ever done it before? Start at the back of the magazine and work your way to the front? Well, this used to be common amongst the Israelites. It used to be common to read things from left to right. It used to be common to open up the book instead of this way to start this way. It was part of our heritage. It's, it's, it's part of our culture. And it's in us as Israelites. Are you following me? So a lot of times you hear me say, well, you know, I know that we would rather look at pictures than read. It is true. But a lot of times, if I say that, uh, many times that statement is, can be taken many different ways. Now I'm making sense? Um, Sometimes it, it could seem that I'm talking uh, from a, a negative and a derogatory viewpoint. But yet, when you look at the old hieroglyphics, the things from way long, long time ago, from the original uh, Hebrew language, um, the way that they understood and the way that they read was when they rolled up on stone, when they chiseled it in stone. Are right, you following me? Um, they chiseled um, what we would call today words. They chiseled signs that would be words or pictures that would be words. So they will often use a pictorial type of a way of communication. And then what they would do is it look at the picture, since they were all one culture and one language, the Hebrews were, then they all understood. Yes, sir. Now I'm making sense. Yes. And so the reason why that the scrolls and everything was written um, so that you could read from left to right is because when they would chisel stuff on stone or whatever it be, it was more natural for a right-handed person to chisel to the left. So then when the Greeks culture came in, it was more natural to go from right to left because then your hand would smear the ink as you go along. So when we start to change different things, especially the way we think and stuff, because the Hebrews did, they still wrote that way regardless. They just took their time. But we've had things to influence us to, to change the way we view things. And I would, gender, well, I would have to say that it has changed the way we even view our God. You see, you've got to come out of the Western mindset. We all started as Christians, but we're not Christians today. Um, because, I mean, he had to start us somewhere. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light, and he's continually bringing us closer and closer to him. And the only way that we have growth is through the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we have to study and show ourselves approved. We have to constantly increase in knowledge. Is that right? And in understanding. So, um, the way that the ancient Hebrews would understand is, is that they would look at pictures or they would look at words that we would call words today, and they would be in a pictorial type of a writing. And that's how they understood. Hallelujah. Not making any sense? Now, I'm not going to go over every um, single one of them, but I will make here a quick example of something just popped up in my mind that I didn't write down. For instance... This right here, that right there is, is uh, how our people understood. Now, to explain this writing, if you were in ancient Hebrew, this would be signifying a male going into the tent first and the females in the back of the tent because that's how they understood Today we look at that and, and go, what is that? 
You know it was the male because this signifies a seed. Here is the door of the tent, and the males were often sleeping in the front, and the females would in the back. That's how they looked at things. That's how they view things. Um, so we look at stuff from a total different viewpoint today because we have lost through translation. We have lost through interpretation the real meaning. So that's the reason why we become students of the scripture so we can come and revisit a lot of these things that um, have been escaped from our minds. So the Western society and the Western viewpoint has distorted a lot of real meanings for us, and that's the reason why that we don't really have in our t today's churches, if I can use that statement and be pure, a real hunger and a real thirst to be righteous and a real hunger and a real thirst to be holy. But for those of us who have had that experience, we understand that there's something that has gone on. And as we continue to feed the inward man, are you following me? We notice that the, the outward man, while we do take care of him and, and make sure that he's maintained and stuff, we're more concerned with the inward than we are the outward. Because the spirit of the Most High changed our breath, which we're going to visit that term too. Am I making any sense? Hallelujah. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to view something here for a moment. Um, anyone who displays um, hate, um, of course, it's associated in our society as someone who doesn't love. And, of course, love and hate is based on the individual. We pick and choose at any time what we believe when somebody's displaying love or they displaying hate. We don't understand balance. In our society, we understand that the Creator, the Eternal Most High, is a is is the Elohim of balance. Are you following me? So, of course, love and hate is defined in our society by being either negative or offensive, or um, derogatory, or um, wonderful, or beautiful, or caring. Use any one of those superlatives. It makes no difference to me. So when, you're when you tell the truth in our culture, in our society, you're viewed as hateful. Because truth changes this and the way that it operates. And we're comfortable in the present state that we're in right now, and we don't want to go outside of the box and allow truth to change our perspective and view of life. That's why most people who are representing the truth and stand for the truth are often hated. Hallelujah. But if you'll allow people to go on um, being deceived and believing lies, then you're viewed as a person of love.